we're live. All right, <clears throat> so to review some of the initial information that you got from um, the video itself, uh, the videos that you watched, um, <clears throat> adjectives describe nouns, and that's a pretty you know, common grammatical concept. So in Latin, um, you need to know that because adjectives describe nouns, they describe a variety of people and places and things. In Latin, each of these nouns for people, places, and things, they all have their own gender. And then, of course, in addition to having their gender, they have individual cases based on how they're used in a sentence. And then, of course, within cases, there are also singular and plural. So <clears throat> adjectives can morph to become um, uh, uh, congruent, if you will, with any noun. Think of adjectives like chameleons. Have you seen a chameleon actually do its chameleon thing? I've never seen it in person. I've just kind of seen, like, you know, videos and stuff like that. Um, but when a chameleon goes onto a rock, it becomes a certain shade of gray. When a chameleon goes onto the branch of a tree or a leaf, it becomes a certain shade of green. So the adjective will morph to whatever um, the noun is. So the noun has a variety of different, I mean, it only has one gender, but the adjective can become anything. The adjective can become any case, and it can become any number. Now keep in mind, and this is something that we did in class on Monday when you were looking at the adjectives from the Chapter 31 story, and you are looking at the nouns that they go with. Um, <clears throat> and we said that quite often an adjective does not match identically to its noun. Yeah? Yes, they can become vocative too. Um, frequently you're going to get an adjective that goes with a noun that doesn't look identical. Okay, so think of adjectives like fraternal twins, right? They have the same genetic makeup as their noun, but when they're walking down the hall together, you can't always tell that they're twins. All right, does that make sense? All right. So um, if you remember, or if you have notes, tell me what first and second declension adjectives look like. If you're looking it up in a dictionary, how do you know that you have found a first and second declension adjective? You can just type it in. If you see the new feature, the question and your answer appear on the same screen. This is a beta feature because I'm a Pear Deck super user. They give me access to all kinds of new things. Enjoy. So see if you can remember or look in your notes to figure out what first and second declension adjectives look like. All right, they have an us, a, uh, and um ending. Very good. So this is an example, bonus, a, uh, um. The us, a, uh, um endings indicate to you that they will have endings from the second declension for us and um, and they will have endings from the first declension. Adjectives are always going to be um, given to you in the dictionary in the same way, with the masculine form first. If there's a separate feminine form, like here, it'll go second, and then the neuter um, will go third. So when you're looking at a first and second, you're looking at us, a, uh, um. um. And then similarly, you might also have like an ER, like pull care, and then pull cra and pull crum. So, um, wait, one second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to scroll this way. Okay. So on your screen now, um, if you go to the bottom, you click next to the pair, it's going to take you to a quizlet that has a list of the essentials of first and second declension adjectives. You would probably know, I would venture to say maybe at least a quarter of these on your own. You've seen about that number. There are a lot though. Yes, well, this is, these are the ones that are most frequently used in all of Latin. Not ecce, like Latin, Latin, you know, proper Latin writing and stuff like that. Yeah. <coughs> do, you, do you recognize some of them? You don't have to say all of them. What's that? 
some of them, a handful of them. And then they all have the same pattern, right? They all have us, ah, uh, and um, or er, ah, uh, and um. All right, so go back to the Pear Deck tab. Keep this tab open, though, because you'll use it in a minute. <clears throat> what do third declension adjectives look like? Same idea as before. So if you're looking in the dictionary and you uncover a third declension adjective, how do you know that you've just uncovered a third declension adjective? Okay, so it has is <clears throat> as the genitive form. It will not have a ah and um, because a ah and um are indicative of the first and second declension. It's not going to have an r either. This is an example of one, um, but it's important to note what marks it. The er is not what marks third declension. It does have third declension endings, whereas the no wherein the nominative is you know some sort of variety. Is will be the genitive ending. <coughs> Excuse me. And then there's an example here of wetus, weteris, which has the genitive is. Okay, there are multiple terminations. If you were watching the video and got lost in the whole termination section, don't worry about it. No one is ever going to ask you, oh, how many terminations is this adjective? It's just helpful to know um, how many like varieties of the um, adjective you can expect, basically. But as far as your need to know, you don't need to know. All right. <clears throat> so, of course, now you're going to look on Quizlet at the list of essential third declension adjectives. Yeah. Usually it's is, is, eh. Yeah. Like, no, eh is the neuter form. Yeah, so adjectives are masculine, then feminine, then neuter. So sometimes it's just is and then eh. Yeah, 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 bro, I would be the neuter. So most of these are two termination. <clears throat> but you can, I hope, see that there's a pretty significant difference between what a first and second declension adjective looks like and what a third declension adjective looks like. That said, once an adjective is born into a certain set of declension endings, it stays there forever. Once you are born a Hoffman, you stay a Hoffman, genetically, forever. Hoffman can never have other people's attributes genetically. So a first and second declension will not magically have third declension endings one day, and vice versa. Bless you. All right? So, <clears throat> now we're going to venture a little bit more into the world of adjectives, and we're going to give it some new terminology. And... <clears throat> the first term that we're going to apply to adjectives is what's called the positive degree. A de an adjective will have three degrees. The first one's called the positive degree. Now, the positive degree is essentially the dictionary entry. That's it. Whatever you see as the meaning of an adjective in English in the dictionary, that's called the positive degree. So I've given you some examples. Brave, fat, sweet, Wicked, true, slow, rich, poor, um, happy, sad, fortunate, unfortunate, serious, light, heavy, light, forward, backward, inside, outside, stuff like that. Okay, something that you would use to describe something. Make sense? All right, these are the adjectives that you're most used to knowing. So <clears throat> this is the same slide that I just showed you, but I want you to go back to the Quizlet lists that you have in your other tabs. I want you to find the Latin version of each of these. A lot of you are going to start with the brave one. Some of you, I'd like for you to start at the slow one and work your way backwards. One or two is fine. You don't have to find all six. 
So just find the len, and then you can write it in right on the slide. No, it's here. Yeah, just write it like you can draw a line or something that like this is the one I'm talking about. So find one or two, draw them in, type them in if you have to. Click on the slide. Okay, so we have um, lentus, which is slow, uh, werus, which is true, not improves. I think that was an autocorrect. Yes, Okay. Uh, the word for fat is pinguis, which is where we get penguin from. Right, right. Um, brave is fortis. Um, <clears throat> in general, I, I would have hoped that you would have written in the whole dictionary entry and not just like the single nominative form, but let's see what else some people wrote. Some people did, I think. Uh, Dulcus is sweet. Scholestus is wicked. Pinguis, Dulcus, Fortis, Scholestus is wicked. You, there are two words for wicked. Yeah. Obesus is also fat. Lentus is slow. Dulcus, Fortis. All right, great. Any questions about what adjectives look like in the positive degree? No? All right. So um, <clears throat> we're going to pause. We're going to take a fast brain break. We're going to take your adjective knowledge to the next level. Welcome to next level adjectives, my fine feathered friends. These are called comparative adjectives. And you use comparative adjectives when you are comparing two nouns by a description, by some sort of quality of those two nouns. This penguin is fatter than that penguin. I did that on purpose. Well, yeah, it keeps them warmer. Um, right, these cookies are sweeter than the cupcake. Maybe they're overly sugary cookies, I don't know. Um, now, the third one has sort of an archaic use of the comparative, but it's still comparative. The forward on our soccer team is rather strong. The object of comparison, if you will, is not in the sentence. But you're still making a comparison to his strength versus other people's strength. Yes? Would, um, like, the forward on our soccer team is the strongest, but that's still the same? It would not be. That's something different, yeah. That's third level adjectives. Say it again. You could say stronger. You could say stronger, yep. Um, and then alternatively, you could say more. So firefighters are more brave than I am. True story. So in English, we have three different modes of using comparisons. We have blanker, we have rather, and then the adjective, and then we have more, and then the adjective. Um, not, not with what we're doing now. So, without using anybody's name, I would like for you to write an English sentence that has a comparative degree adjective. Yes. I can't use slavic name? No. What's your degree to? No. So, the comparative adjective matters. Yep, yep. Any comparative adjective that you want. Make a comparison using someone's quality. Oh, sorry, you're going to write it here. You're going to type it. Can we do that? Can we just say, just say she or he then. 
Does it have to be about a person? Like, no. Can I make up a random name? Sure. Okay. <laughs> no. Let's just keep it nameless. Or made up names, you know. <laughs> what about a celebrity? Nope. No, no one's specific name. Okay. We're not going to personalize these to anybody. All right. Uh, X Tina is meaner than no, the Grinch. X Teen. Okay, it's fine. Uh, the jet flew faster than the stupid duck that challenged it. <laughs> he is more brave than the entire team. Meme Lord's memes are better than any others. I didn't know. I didn't write that. I was looking up. The something is fatter than the something else. Sham Wow is more observant. It sure is than other cows. <laughs> He was happier than her. Her hair is curlier than mine. The little boy is luckier than the dog. The iPad case is rather green. Sure is. The deck desk is easier to write on than the wall. <laughs> what? Oh, to write. Yava is a better actor than any of us and <laughs> stuff. All right. <laughs> so, comparative adjectives in Latin. We're going to start with an extensive conversation about step one. And then we will have a sep separate, extensive conversation about steps two and three. So step one is that you are reducing an adjective to its stem. To do that, essentially, you're going to take off whatever declension endings are there in the dictionary entry. Keep in mind that the hardest ones to keep track of are in the third declension, because third declension often changes stem between nominative and genitive. So examples of stem changers. If you don't get to writing two and three because you're writing this, that's okay. Two and three will be on the next slide too. Yes, dear. Okay. So for this, so um, so Malior already has the I the I or like how because yes yes because it's already that and yes it can't be made just a normal yes adjective. yes right. which this is something we're covering on Monday. Okay. So yeah, but you're correct. So if your third declension adjective audax, um, in the genitive it changes its stem to audacus. So now the stem, without any sort of declension ending, is just audac, is being the declension ending. Fortis is an easier um, formation uh, because you're just taking off this is. Pull care is a first and second declension adjective, but it does feature a tiny stem change because the E drops out between masculine and then the other forms. So that is something that you want to keep in mind because the stem is now full crew. Pinguist, you can just take off the IS, which is the third declension ending. Tardos, take off the US, which is the second declension ending. Lytos, take off the US. So we're going to focus for a moment on the stems themselves. First, take this adjective, just isolate the stem. Just write out whatever letters are part of the stem. Just type it in and post it. Grand. Great. Grand is the stem from grandis because we took off the IS, which was the declension ending, and that was what we were left with. Great. Let's try a different one. Potens potentus. It is not poten. We have a stem change between the nominative and the genitive. Potent is the stem that we were looking for. Potent. Okay, so potent was our stem. Let's try it again. Acare, acris, acre. What's your stem? ACR is correct. That's the stem. Yep. Yep. 
Okay, it's not going to be ACE because the stem changes between the nominative and the genitive forms. So you have to pay attention to what it ends up being when it's genitive. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so now, this is the same slide that we were on before. We first took the stem. We got, the, got it down to its basic stem, its root. Now we're going to add the three letters I-O-R, which are pronounced Eeyore. Do you remember in Winnie the Pooh, Eeyore the donkey? Eeyore is always more sad than anyone. Uh, he's he's he is. He is. Do you know all the characters in Winnie the Pooh represent different mental disorders? Yeah. This is true. This is true. And then the boy has like schizophrenia. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, so anything that happens in Hundred Acre Wood, it's always worse for Eeyore. When there's a storm, his house is always more wet than anyone's. When his friends are hungry, he's always more hungry than anyone. No, you can't. It has to be more. That's a diff less is a completely different like structure in Latin, at least. Yeah. So Eeyore is more. It rhymes, but it also calls to mind our one of our beloved childhood characters, so that's helpful. After the Eeyore, then you're going to add third declension endings. It does not matter what declension the noun belonged to originally. Once it goes into comparative degree, it'll only have third declension endings exclusively. The nominative singular is just Eeyore, because in third declension it starts with blank and then goes is, e, m, e, right? So here's our blank, this is just Eeyore, and then you have Eeyore is, Eeyore, -e, Eeyore m. I'm going to show you two different adjectives between this and the next slide. You should at least get the singulars declined in your notes from one of them, if you can't get them all. So the stem becomes Clar, ladies. We add Eeyore, and then we have all the other third declension endings. This can also be an I. This is also I-U-M. You will never, ever have to make the determination if you need the I there, though. Okay, so don't worry about it. As far as translation goes, this adjective means three things. It means bright, clear, or famous. So I've given you three different varieties of the comparative degree based on its various definitions. So it could mean brighter, it could mean more bright, it could be rather bright. It could be more clear, clearer, or rather clear. It could be um, rather famous, more famous, but it can't be famouser, because English is awkward like that. Okay. So a second example for you is the adjective leben, lebens lebensis, which means willing. Same idea. Here's the dictionary entry, so this becomes your stem, and then you add eor, and then you add third declension endings. So more willing, rather willing. Um, it's you can't do willinger though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you take lebentis and you take off the is, mm -hmm. and then it's just lebent. Yep. Yep. That's just because recording. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's like confusing though because of the other because right. Oh. Yeah. But if you think about willing, like willing is um like freely. You know, if you give of something willingly, it's freely. All right, so your turn. Uh first, ignore the word all, but then take this positive degree adjective and give the nominative and the genitive comparative forms. Okay? Oh. Just the nominative and the genitive comparative forms. In Latin. No. Okay. Yeah. Would like as sweet be comparative to this as like as sweet as like as sweet as possible almost I don't think it that's comparison comparative well let me let me put it this way 
English has the construction in which as can work in a comparative way. Latin does not. You would say its sweetness is equal to something. Yeah. It's not easier, it's just different. Yeah, there's an adjective for similis. So. All right, alwidior, alwidior is. We want the is for the genitive ending, not es. Alwidior, alwidior is. It could be a typo. That's very true. Just kidding. That's all right. Um, all right, who can give us the English for alwidior? What does that actually mean then? Eager. No, no, more eager. More eager, eager. or rather eager. rather eager. Yep. Okay, let's try this one. Felix, Felicus. Just the nominative and the genitive. That's it. Felicior, Felicioris. Very good. The stem had changed, but you all picked up on it. How would you translate Felix, Felicus? Or felicky, or excuse me, luckier, rather lucky, or more lucky. Right. Good. Okay. There are five sentences here, each of which features um, a comparative degree adjective in Latin. Um, let's see here. You three are going to do number one. You three are going to do number five. Um, Philip, your group is going to do number two. Be very careful with your subject. You can work together, and you can all produce the same translation. That's fine. Um, uh, uh, Greg, your group's going to do number three, and then Sarah, number four. Work together to translate it. You should each put it in. True, but this is from a Roman perspective. So. <laughs> What's up? Okay. All right, just give me, as soon as I start showing your answers, it's going to disappear from my screen, but you will still have the Latin on your screen. So, um, this is number five. My master is more angry than your master. Good. You could have also said my master is angrier than your master. Great. Um, good job with the daddy sentence, Phillips group. You start with daddy because the subject of a verb that ends with I is I. So I gave the book to the sweeter girl. It should be a singular girl, but I'm not going to quibble because you at least got the subject and verb correct. Um, uh, the senators are more noble than the slaves. Very good. The slave, it should be bought, but again, I'm not quibbling about that right now. Um, the pig in the shop of the rather evil merchant. And never mind. Okie dokie. Was there an, a, a fifth one? Okay, all right. Do you mind if I move on, though, in, for the sake of time? All right. Um, <clears throat> just give me, we're going to take a fast brain break before we move on, though. So, omne sate. This is the moment you've been waiting for, John. The, yeah! the third degree of adjectives are called superlatives. When you become seniors in high school, you will vote on what's called senior superlatives. You will vote for cutest couple, best eyes, most likely to succeed, fastest track team member. I don't know what else you would vote for in superlatives. Do I have Kobe who? Correct. No. He's so fast. Oh. Well, 
We should start voting for him now then yeah. for his superlatives. All right. So um, the superlative adjectives are the most adjective ever. The most oh, rare. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it's like the most bad. Like, or like, baddest. <laughs> Great question. So English, English renders the superlative degree in three different ways, and I've demonstrated that with our sample sentences. Um, Google Classroom is the most useful app on my phone. Maybe not the most fun, but it's still the most useful. Um, the very quick rabbit jumped away before I even got out of the car. Yes, indeed, very is the top of the line level for an adjective. It seems kind of weak, doesn't it? And yet, it's or still. You could you could use that. That's fine. The, the Romans didn't though, so we're not going to see it here. That's all. We're so much more evolved now, you know, with words like that. Um, there's amazing diversity in the deepest reefs of the ocean. My friend is the luckiest girl in the world. Our dogs are very gentle with our children. So English will give you the superlative in three different ways. One of them is using most with whatever the adjective is. The second is using very with whatever the adjective is. And then the third one, you're right, is attaching the suffix of est to the end of it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I screen cap this. All right. So write your own English sentence without names with a superlative degree adjective. Yeah, without, without naming people in this class, if you can avoid that. As long as it's not like a derogatory thing, yes. I mean, if you want to say that Kobe, what's his name? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yes. Yes, because gifted is a, an adjective to describe somebody. Yes. Correct. Correct. That unto itself is superlative. So it best best is a superlative adjective, right? So you would say like this is the best classroom. So best describes the classroom. You're not describing anything else with best. Uh, it does have positive. It's good, better, best. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, just give me, I want to clarify something that I was just talking to Vanessa about. To say best, best is a superlative degree adjective. You can't combine best with anything else. Unto itself, it is already superlative. Okay. Is that even the very best? The very best is Kobe Grant is the fastest, um, the most mourned. Mr. Couch is the most amazing couch ever. <laughs> I'm scrolling. I saw the cutest dog walking. She has the most basil in the whole world along with her absurd amount of prosciutto. She's gifted at singing. Oh, boy. All right. So, superlatives in Latin are also going to start with, as you guessed it, the stem of the adjective. And then after the stem, now you're going to add isimus, which is the most amount of letters ever. Whoa. Oh, yeah. See? It's, it's the superlative of the adjectives, you know? Yes? Exactly why. Yeah. Very good. Pianissimo, superlative, versus just piano. All time. 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> After you add isimus, you would add for the feminine isima, for the neuter isimum. Because now it has us, a, ah, um, all superlatives are first and second declension adjectives. Again, it doesn't matter the declension from which it came. Once it reaches superlative level, it's always going to be first and second. So these are the same stem changers that we did before, that were on the slide before, so I'm not going to spend too much time. I'm going to move on so I can show you what's the same as it was before. What did you need? Okay. Okay, so this is an example of a superlative degree adjective. This is the same adjective that we made comparative before. We isolate the stem from clarosaum to clar, and then we add, you should probably look on your own screen because the purple doesn't show up very well on the big screen. This is true. Irony. Uh, clarissimus, and then second declension endings. Clarissimi, clarissimo, clarissimum, clarissimo. Clarissima, and then first declension endings. Clarissimum, and then second neuter endings. Translations are exactly what you would expect. Brightest, most bright, very bright, most famous. You can't say famousest, but you can say very famous. You can say very clear, clearest, or uh, most clear. Any one of those, as long as you indicate that it's like, you know, the top level of clarity. Clarity is. <laughs> okay. The information on the left is the same. The um, uh, example on the right is slightly different. This is that adjective that means willing. So when it becomes superlative, it's libentissimus, libentissima, libentissimum. So most willing, very willing, or I don't think you can do that in English. <coughs> Willingest. I don't think that works. <laughs> Here can be a tribute? Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Your turn. Is it already the same thing or are we not getting like... Yes. So you're going to take awidus aum. You're going to make the superlative degree versions of it. All you have to do is make the nominative forms, but you do need to make the masculine, the feminine, and the neuter forms. Wait, wait, stop. What? Awidus <coughs> nominative masculine, nominative feminine, nominative so neuter. Yes. And singulars, too. Okay. Awidissimus aum. Awidissimus, awidissima, awidissimum. Very good. Yeah, awidissimus. The, the only thing I'm going to caution you, um, I, as you can write that as long as you understand that you're swapping out the us for an a uh, and not like the whole darn thing. Okay. Ah, we decimus ah um. Great, great, great. Hi, Noah. All right, let's try this one. Oh wait, how would you translate ah we decimus? Okay, or very eager or most eager. Yeah, I mean yes, e eagerest is I guess a possibility. I don't think it's correct English though. I don't know what rule it falls under, but I don't think it's correct. All right, so try that same magic with Felix. Felicus. No, just the nominative masculine. Yeah. Same drill as before. Felicissimus a um. Felicissimus, felicissima, felicissimum. Oh, 
gonna do it this one instead. Oh, hello. Most lucky, very lucky, or luckiest? You did? Okay. That's okay. You know what? It, the confessional thing at church is anonymous for the most part, right? Why shouldn't Paradox Confessional be anonymous? Too? Yeah, it's like that's a thing now. <laughs> we'll, start, we'll start. We'll start a new hashtag trend: Paradox Confessions. Felicissimus, Felicissimum. This one, yeah, this one's incorrect. Okay. All right. So, um, sorry about that. You knew it was coming. It's Latin. There's always going to be an asterisk somewhere. This, see, here's the thing. The same people who invented running water and the arch and coliseums, they also invented this language. You can't knock them, you know? Also true. Okay, so there are two exceptions that you must note. The first one pertains to adjectives that, in their positive degree, ended with an er, like pull care, for example. If it originally, in the dictionary, ended with an er, in the positive degree, you are not going to put isimus onto it. That R is very strong, so it's the R that's going to get duplicated. So n pull care does not become pull care isimus. You just take the R and use that. Pull care Pull care Also, see? It's okay. Um, I was just going to say that <clears throat> you'll also notice that these two adjectives happened to change their stem for the comparative degree. But because they're sort of the exception in the superlative degree, they will not change their stem. They keep the ER, which was natural to their stem. The other exception, and this only pertains to six adjectives. That's it, just six. These six adjectives have LIS at the end of their nominative form. And instead of becoming illimissimus or illi illissimus, it becomes illimus, and the L gets duplicated. An example of one of these is facilis. The superlative is not facilissimus, it is facilimus. This rule pertains to six adjectives. One of them is facilis. What does facilis mean? Anyone? It means easy. It, it pertains to faculus. It also pertains to difficulus. What do you think difficulus is? Easy. Difficult. Very good. Faculus is easy, so difficulus. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, Groculus means slender. What do you think similis means? Same time. Different. Different. Similar. Yes. What do you think dissimilis means? Not similar. Correct. And then humilis, which is your last one, means humble. Yeah, I will end the paradox. I will get you your takeaways. You will not have homework tonight. We'll continue working.